Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we are going to discuss as demonstrate how to create a simple SSL server. In previous video, we made an example how to create a simple SSL client. So here's on the Linux and uh, just using Qt create to create a very simple C++ project called SSL underscore server. And uh, we are going to design to use usage is like SSL server and the part number, private key file name and the PM file name. Private key file name and the PM file name. PM file is the certificate files. So the pro the demo in this example, we are going to use in Boost ASIO libraries. So in our compiling project file, we just need to add Boost IO stream libraries, pthread because it's a multi-threading application, and Boost the system library, and this crypto and SSL library is a typical for encrypt and SSL uh, type, you know, formatting. So the typical boost IO context, uh, IO service, we just using the IO context, create an IO context, and uh, instantialize the one server. In this case, our server take a four parameter for instantialize, one is the IO context, and the vice argument one is the part number. Argument two is private key file name. And argument three is the PM certificate file name. And then we're going to use the IO context run. This is a classical, typical how to use IO context for the main program. And the IO context, if you noticed in the old one years ago, and the boost library uses more the IO service. Right now, they try to use more IO context. So the IO context, IO service is a basic uh, handling the IO service. The IO context, context class also provides the core IO functionality for user of the asynchronous IO object. So including socket acceptor and the UDP socket. And SSL is a protocol on the TCP socket. And the IO context is a threading safety. So it's especially very good for writing the server program because it's just connection coming. We just uh, instantialize a new threading. So server holding, uh, handling multi threading and multi connection contemporarily. So here in the server, we have member is called the IO context and there is reference because IO context and the acceptor, which is the listener for the typically for the listener for the socket and the SSL context is for SSL protocol. <laughs> so on the instantialize the constructor, we instantialize our IO context object, acceptor object, and SSL context object. For the SSL contact object, we have to set some options. We have to set the type is SSL v23 and uh, some context that's default workaround, no SSL v2, and uh, it depends. So, and uh, we have to set up a password callback, callback if we need to verify password with client and the server. In this uh, demo, we don't verify password callback, so we just uh, created this function, return this, uh, this the test and uh, we have to indicate the certificate file which is the pm file we pass from command line and private key file which is the pk file so after we 
instantialize all the object. We just call the method called start accept. So the start accept is where start a new session, which is handling directly socket communication, and then we the acceptor is going to use an async accept to re waiting reading this socket, the lower socket, and the function for manager async accept we call the handling accept. And in the handling accept method or function, if we pass two parameters new session and error. If there's error, we just delete this session, we just new session, we just create, we go back to waiting accept another connection coming. If new session, if accept okay, no error, we just new session start. Okay, for the session object, we have a member is a SIR socket and the buffer, which is the maximum length, we're going to call it is called 1024. We can accept more, but in this demo, we just put a 1024. And so we are going to, after initial, uh, constructor initialize this object, we're going to start. This is the object the start. So let's come to the object start. Means the server is already accepted client connections. So then the step one, we are going to do handshake. So handshake is this, is the server and the client starting negotiate the certificate. And the function for, for handling this handshake, we call the handle handshake. In the handle handshake, if there's an error, we just delete this session. We finish, we delete this session. And if there's no error, we're going to use the async read sum to read from the socket to the data buffer. In the socket, we read into the data buffer. So the handling for the async read sum it's called a handle read. And uh, this is uh, the buffer underscore transfer. It's the real byte we read. This is the maximum length, which is the maximum byte we can read. And this is the real we read. So in the handling read function, we're going to, if uh, there's no error, we just uh, print out to the standard output the date, what we read and uh, we just use the async write because we always use a single handling a single read a single write because this is multi threading and uh, and we just write back to the socket which is the date we just read and the number of byte we read and the function for handling this uh, async write is handle write so come to handle right. What we do is we already read into the data buffer and we already write back the, to the socket. So we just reset the buffer memory set and reading for the next coming from the client. And function for handling read is handle read. So handle read after we handle read verse handle read here we just print out and we write back so we continue read write read write till there's no more read then we delete this session we come back to the finish this communications so let's just build this Okay, so now let's go to the server. Here is the server side. So this is this is the binary executable we just read. So 
This is uh, our server IP address. So this is uh, when we run this server. We have a server key and the server certificate, right? So what the server is using to run, we take uh, is this one. We take uh, part number, we just give one, one, two, three, four. And uh, private key, server key, certificate files, server certificate. So now we start server. We go to another terminal, which is uh, on another server. And uh, we have a client on this server. So this server, this server IP address 100. This is 103. So when we so server client take the one. So client take first is the host IP and the one two three four is the port number and certificate is the new client PM. So. This is test SL one. So we just send to the server. This is a test SSL manager one. So we just see you can see our server on one oh three received this message. This is test SSL message one and this is a handshake verified create and uh, this is uh, reply. This test SS message one is replied back from the server. So let's say if we, our certificate on client is uh, expired. So let's see, and we try to see using some old client PM. And this is the expired client certificate. You can see in the client side, server didn't receive the message. And then on client side, we got a message is a handshake field, certificate verify field. So it means in the server, we have to use the new server certificate to able to communicate with the server. Hello, this is uh, Hui, thanks to watch my video. Hopeful this is uh, useful, enjoyable. It's going to be great to have your feedback. Thank you.